What's up? Welcome to the courtroom. I am Theo. And I'm Oj. And in this podcast, we tell you stories about people's life, liberty, and property. Kikwentohan namin kayo about court rulings in a way that will make you understand jurisprudence like a nine-year-old. All persons before the order, Supreme Court of Justice, shall give their attention for the court now So join us as we delve into true crime, political controversies, and all things that the chismis every week. Maria Victoria Bello Henares, popularly known as Doctora Vicky Bello, is the medical director and principal stockholder of the Bello Medical Group Incorporated or BMGI, a company engaged in cosmetic surgery. Habang si attorney Roberto R.G. Guevara naman is the lawyer of a certain Josefina Josie Norsho, a former patient of Bello who filed criminal cases on the celebrity doctor for an allegedly botched surgical procedure on her buttocks na nagresult daw sa infection. So in 2009, Josie's counsel, si attorney R.G., wrote a series of posts on his Facebook account insulting and verbally abusing Dr. Bello calling her a quack doctor and other names like Reina ng Kaplastikan, Reina ng Payola, and Reina ng Kapalpakan. His post specifically states, Dr. Vicky Bello, watch out for Josepina Norcio's Big Bang on Friday. You will go down in medical history as a quack doctor. Quack, quack, quack. Attorney R.G. also said that he was amused by a libel case filed against him and posted, Hi! Style bulok at style duwag talaga. Lalaka rin ng reyna ng kaplastikan at reyna ng payola ang kaso. Si Emelda Marcos nga sued me for 300 million pesos and ended up apologizing to me. Si Belo pa kaya? Aside from that, he insinuated that Dr. Abelo daw has been bribing people to destroy him. Sabi sa post niya, Nakakatawa nga, 10 million pa yung budget. I didn't know that my reputation is worth that much. Aba, ako kaya magdemanda sa kanila. Ikot-ikot daw yung PR ni Belo eh, trying to convince editors to pin me down with something. Eh, alam ko naman wala akong sex video. Adik uh, talaga sa botok si Aling Becky. At may tama sa utak. Eh, kung gagastos ka na lang din ng 10 million para sa tirang tikon laban sa akin. At to protect your burak na reputation as plastic surgeon. I-donate mo na lang yan sa biktima ni Ondoy, Pepeng at Ramil. Yung mga homeboys ko sa Pasig. Uh, nilimas ni Ondoy ang kukubra sa'yo. Grabe, uso na pala basher nun, no? <laughs> Pero bukod doon, he also ascribed criminal negligence to Bello and BMGI and remark na talagang binaboy daw ni Dr. Bello ang kliyente niyang si Josie. He also labeled BMGI a Frankenstein factory saying that operations at Bello clinics are carried out by unlicensed doctors and calling out a national patient's boycott on BMGI's services. He further posted remarks that allegedly threatened Dr. Bello with criminal conviction without factual basis and without proof, saying, By next year, Vicky Bello will no longer be a doctor. She will be in the middle of a criminal prosecution. The general surgeon of France will have a Philippine version. <laughs> By October and November, Some congressman I have spoken with will be issuing summons to Vicky Bello for a congressional inquiry. The subject, legislation regulating the practice of cosmetic surgery. According sa complaint ni Dr. Bello, aside from personal attacks on her and BMGI's reputation, attorney RG's Facebook post daw were sexist, disrespectful of women, and vulgar. She also said that these posts are written uh, in obscene language and were designed to inspire public hatred, destroy her reputation, to close BMGI and all its clinics, pati na din para mag-extort ng 200 million from her as evidenced by Attorney RG's demand letter. 
Because of this, Dr. Bello filed a verified complaint for disbarment against Attorney RG sa Integrated Bar of the Philippines or IVP. But in defense, Attorney RG claimed na yung complaint daw against him is in violation of his constitutionally guaranteed right to privacy. Kasi nga daw, yung mga posts niya are private remarks made on his private Facebook page. So, it was meant only for his circle of friends. Sabi din niya that he wrote those posts in exercise of his freedom of speech and yung demand letter daw na pinadala niya is not meant to extort money but was sent kasi as requirement for prior filing dun sa estafa case and civil cases for damages niya against Dr. Abelo. Pinoint out din niya na public figure daw si Dr. Abelo and thus a subject of fair comment. Now, after directing the parties to file their respective position papers and clarificatory hearings was done, IBP recommended that Attorney RG be suspended from practice of law for one year in violations of a certain rules under the Code of Professional Responsibility. Attorney RG moved for reconsideration since wala naman daw specific act attributed to him to warrant his suspension from practice. In fact, yung libel cases nga daw against him had already been dismissed for lack of jurisdiction. So, in a resolution dated October 28, 2015, the IBP granted a reduction of the penalty from one year to just six months suspension. Ngayon, ang issue... Administratively liable ba si Attorney RG dun sa mga complaints ni Dr. Abelo? And proper ba yung 6 months na penalty sa kanya instead of 1 year? Well, the Supreme Court examined the record of this case and they agree naman sa findings ng IBP. Except sa penalty na imposed na 6 months which they said should be 1 year. Bakit ulit itataas sa 1 year? Well, isa-isay natin. Okay. Una, Never naman daw kasi dininay ni Attorney RG na pinost niya talaga yung mga bagay na kinocomplain ni Dr. Abelo. Hmm. Ang sinabi lang niya is that yung post na yon were private remarks on his private accounts na para sa friends niya lang. So yung fact na nakaabot yun kay Dr. Abelo violates daw his constitutional rights to privacy. Although sabi ng court, hindi daw uubra yung defense niya. Why? Kasi alam naman natin sa Facebook, di ba? May privacy tools or setting yan which can regulate the accessibility of one's profile or post. So, yung mga users, meron tayong ability to customize uh, our privacy setting. So, before attorney RG can expect privacy in his social network, it is firstly necessary that he, as a user, manifest the intention to keep certain posts private. How? Siyempre, by setting the privacy of his post or profile. In other words, utilization of these privacy tools is the manifestation in the cyber world of the user's invocation of his or her right to informational privacy. Yes, and uh, Attorney RG was insisting kasi na naka-private daw yung post niya. Kaso, Wala kasi siyang na-provide na evidence to prove this. Therefore, without any positive evidence to corroborate with his claim, the said statement is, at best, deemed as self-serving and thus, as per the Supreme Court, deserving scant consideration. Moreover, even if i-accept daw ng court na yung excuse ni Attorney RG na yung post niya was limited naman or viewable only by his friends, Wala pa din talagang assurance of privacy. First of all, masasabi mo ba talaga na yung mga FB friends mo, lahat yun, friends mo talaga in a deep sense, ba? Lalo na daw sa Facebook, that uh, it allows the world to be more open and connected by giving its users the tools to interact and share in any conceivable way. Na, so yung promotion si Facebook, <laughs> paid ad ba ito? <laughs> Ay, hindi <laughs> hindi nga. <laughs> Sinabi talaga yun ng court. Tsaka daw, a good number of Facebook users befriend other users kahit total strangers. And the sheer number of friends one user has usually goes by the hundreds. And yung hundred na Facebook friends mong to can share your post or tag other people to your post even when they are not uh, Facebook friends with you. 
So, in a system like this, questionable din talaga yung tinatawag na privacy eh. True story. Kaya as per Supreme Court, restricting the privacy of one's Facebook post to friends does not guarantee absolute protection from the prying eyes of another user who does not belong to one's circle of friends. And under these circumstances, therefore, yung claim ni Attorney RG na violation of right to privacy was negated. Bukod doon, hindi din tinanggap ng court yung argument niya na yung post niya daw were written in the exercise of his freedom of speech and expression. Because time and again, it has been held that the freedom of speech and of expression is not absolute. So, every person exercising this right is a match with an obligation to act with justice, give everyone his due, and observe honesty and good faith in accordance to Article 19 of the Civil Code. That's why, di pwedeng basta gawing excuse yung freedom of speech and expression, especially to broadcast lies or half-truths, and also to insult others and destroy their name or reputation, or even bring them into disrepute. Kaya... Pasok dito yung mga post ni Attorney RG since they are deemed as ostensibly made with malice, tending to insult and tarnish the reputation of Dr. Bello and BMGI. Tapos di ba, he even ascribed criminal negligence to Dr. Bello and her team. Despite na yung mga criminal cases filed by Josie, against Dr. Bello was actually still pending. Oh, so pending pa pala yung cases. Mm-hmm. He even threatened Dr. Bello with conviction for criminal negligence and estafa, which is contrary to his obligation to act with justice. Kaya naman, the court ruled that attorney urges inappropriate and obscene language and his act of publicly insulting and undermining the reputation of Dr. Bello through his Facebook post are deemed as complete and in utter violation of the provisions in the Code of Professional Responsibility, like yung Rule 7.03, which provides that a lawyer shall not engage in conduct that adversely reflects on his fitness to practice law, nor shall he, whether in public or private life, behave in a scandalous manner to the discredit of the legal profession. And Rule 8.01 stating that a lawyer shall not in his professional dealings use language with the, uh, which is abusive, offensive, or otherwise improper. And Rule 19.01 stating that a lawyer shall employ only fair and honest means to attain the lawful objectives of his client and shall not present, participate in presenting, or threaten to present unfounded criminal charges to obtain an improper advantage in any case or proceeding. Bilang abogado, he is bound kasi to observe proper decorum at all times, regardless kung sa public or private life niya. Here, attorney RG overlooked the fact that he must behave in a manner befitting an officer of the court that is respectful, firm, and decent. Uh, in cases like this, lawyers may be disciplined even sa mga bagay na ginagawa nila in their private capacity as long as their misconduct reflects their lack of probity or good demeanor. That's because when the Code of Professional Responsibility or the Rules of Court speaks of conduct or misconduct, yung reference nun is hindi lang confined to one's behavior in connection with the performance of their professional duties. Kasama dito yung mga misconduct that are unrelated to the actual practice of their profession. So long as yung act na yon na ginawa nila or ginagawa nila shows that they are unfit for the office and unworthy of the privileges which their license and the law invest in them. And in this case, Attorney RG, as per the court, definitely acted inappropriately and rudely and use words unbecoming of an officer of the law. Tsaka, even if Dr. Rabello is considered a celebrity or a public personage who is uh, exposed to criticism, hindi maja-justify nun yung disrespectful language ni Attorney RG. It is uh, the cardinal condition of all criticism that it shall be bonified. 
and shall not spill the walls of decency and propriety. In this case, Attorney R.G.'s remarks against uh, Dr. Rabello breached the said walls for which reasons um, Attorney R.G. must be administratively sanctioned. Thus, a suspension from the practice of law for a period of one year and a stern warning that a repetition of the same or similar acts will be dealt with more severely was rendered to him accordingly. If you guys like this audiogram, please listen to the full episode on Spotify or on your favorite podcast app where you can hear our insights on this case. Again, this is Oj and Theo leaving you with a reminder to always look back in history because President shall rule the future. Thank you for listening and we'll see you again in the courtroom. Bye!